Hi friends. So today we are going to talk about mindfulness and the art of restoring the inner calm. As I had mentioned in my earlier video, this is the need of the hour. We all are stressed out because of COVID and then this war. So this is the best time to discuss how to restore your inner calm. Because whenever we are stressed, that stress does impact our physical, mental, emotional well-being. And then eventually it impacts everything else and the life quality of life reduces. So that is the reason it's very important to stay calm and it, it's very important to learn the techniques of uh, restoring our inner calm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you first so that we can stay on topic. So this series is mindfulness, the art of restoring your inner calm. And uh, so in this series, what we are going to do is we are going to learn how to slow down the racing thoughts, let go of negativity and reduce the stress so that our body and mind both can be at calm. And that's how we are going to restore the well-being. That's how we are going to reach our fullest potential because when we feel great, when we are able to restore our well-being, then we can function well in our jobs. We can give our best to our family also. And that's how we can enhance our not only physical and emotional well-being, but also occupational and social well-being. So there is a saying by Lao Tzu that the only way to be in at peace is to live in the now or live in the present. When we are depressed, we are living in past. When we are anxious, we are always worrying about the future or living in future. So if you are at peace, that is the proof that you are living in now or you are living in present. And everyone tries to live in the present for now and then, but what happens is some news comes to us or uh, some event which we read on newspapers or watch on the TV that will create disturbance and then we'll go down the path of worrying or anxiety. So in Ayurveda, uh, it is said that whenever there is a problem, it first of all occurs in the mind, it occurs here, and then it will manifest in the body. So there are three types of doshas, like a body, un, your unique mind-body constitution. And the first is vata. And vata dosha, if it is increased a lot or if it is out of balance, it tends to lead to anxiety. So the person becomes more anxious. Now, if pitta dosha is increased, it tends to make person more angry and more critical in nature. And if vata dosha is increased, it tends to make the person uh, more depressed or lethargy, it leads to lethargy or attachment or laziness. So that is what, that is how Ayurveda looks at anxiety, worry, depression, um, and other emotional and mental imbalance. So let us first of all, before we go into the series, let us first of all touch upon mindfulness and mindlessness, because mindfulness is going to help you a lot in attending the in uh, in attaining the inner calm and staying peaceful from within so uh, let us touch a little bit more on mindfulness but before we go to mindfulness we must understand what is mindlessness so mindlessness means you're functioning on autopilot you're not worried about the repercussions of your action it's like uh, for example let's say you are uh, going to work same place for like last 5 years Sometimes we have observed that we are just lost in our thoughts while we are driving to work. And uh, we, we realize when we reach the work that, oh, we have already arrived, but we don't know how exactly we arrived. And it's kind of scary at sometimes because if you are not mindful about the way you are driving, there are chances that you might have skipped that stop sign or you might not have paid attention to somebody crossing the road. So that is what mindlessness is. Everything is on autopilot. Your actions are on autopilot. And you're worrying, you're performing the actions without worrying about the repercussions or outcome of the action. That is, uh, uh, that is not an ideal way to live life because it can cause a lot of problems in our life. Uh, so now what is mindfulness? So mindfulness is you're aware of your actions. Not only you are aware of the actions you make on your daily basis, but you are also aware of the consequences of your actions. So you think before the choices you make so that you make 
make the right choice. So like sometimes people eat mindlessly, right? And what would happen is even if they're not hungry, just because they saw the food, they felt like grabbing it, putting it in the mouth, and then they realize that, oh, I was not even hungry and I ate this. While mindfulness is, um, if you see the food, you are going to first of all, ask yourself, am I hungry or not? And if you are hungry, you are also going to ask yourself, and it happens within seconds. Once you practice mindfulness, it does not take a lot of time. But you're basically going to ask yourself, is this food going to nourish me and nurture me? Is it a healthy food? Or it's going to eventually add more problems to my physical health, like fast food or burger bought from McDonald's might be tasty to the tongue right now, but it can eventually, if you eat it every day with big fries and that shake, it can eventually cause problems like cholesterol or diabetes. So that is what differentiating between, that is the difference between mindfulness and mind, mindlessness. So today in the first session of the series, we are going to just see, look at the five pillows which help you maintain your inner calm or through mindfulness. And what are these five pillars? And in following sessions, we are going to touch upon each and every pillar and go in depth on how that particular pillar is going to help you attend mindfulness and is going to help you stay calm. So these five pillars are what? First is your five senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. So these are your five senses and they play a very important role in maintaining your inner calm and how you will, you will, will see it in the following sessions. The second pillar is mind and your thoughts. The third pillar is self-talk, self-affirmation, you can call it whatever you want, or the way you talk to yourself, your communication with yourself. The fourth pillar is meditation, mindful breathing or pranayama. And the fifth pillar is social support. So in our following sequence, we are going to go through more in details about how these five pillars affect your inner calm and how you can be mindful about these five pillars so that you can maintain, uh, reduce the uh, anxiety or worry or stress and maintain, maintain the inner calm. So with that, for today's uh, session, we are done. And in our next session, we are going to start with our first pillar, five senses. Till then, have a great day.